This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Find out more later in the video. Microsoft's latest Surface Go is here, and it's packing several small improvements over the first generation Surface Go that makes this new version a relatively small yet significant update. Microsoft has crammed in three key areas of improvement, which includes a larger display, more processing power, and a slightly bigger battery. But do these areas of improvement actually make a difference? Find out in this review of the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Let's begin tackling the first key area of improvement with Surface Go 2, and that's with the display. The first Surface Go had a tiny 10-inch screen which, while great for portability, was a little too small for most laptop tasks. Plus, the small screen size meant the bezels on Surface Go 1 were huge. Microsoft has addressed this with Surface Go 2 by increasing the size of the display by half an inch, while maintaining the exact same size chassis. That means to put the larger display in the Surface Go 2, Microsoft has slimmed down the bezels. This makes a huge difference in the overall appearance of the product, adding to its premium aesthetic. The bezels aren't the slimmest in the world by any means, but it's still a big improvement over the first generation Surface Go. It looks modern and sleek, and the other added benefit of a larger display is that it also helps with making things feel a little less cramped on screen. Apps and content have more room to breathe now, and that makes using the product feel a little less claustrophobic, especially when using multiple apps at a time. Microsoft has also bumped the display's resolution slightly to keep things looking sharp with the added screen real estate. Surface Go 2 has a 1920x1280 display, which is the same resolution as Microsoft's non-pro Surface 3 from 2015. The display is excellent, with crisp visuals and accurate colours. As it's a Surface, it also supports touch and pen input, which is always nice to have. If I were to hand the Surface Go 2 to someone and ask them how much they think I paid for it, I would bet they'd say much higher than $399. And that's because the product looks and feels premium with its slim bezels and magnesium chassis. It's essentially a mini Surface Pro on the outside, and that's a good thing, especially for the price. But most people aren't going to be paying that $399 price tag for Surface Go 2. The $399 price tag is for the entry-level model, which comes with 4GB of RAM, 64GB of eMMC storage, and an Intel Pentium Gold 4425Y processor that powers everything under the hood. These specs put together aren't the most powerful in the world, which is why Microsoft offers more powerful configurations for more money. The variant we're using to review is one with 8GB of RAM, 128GB of SSD storage, and an Intel Core N3-8100Y processor. This model will run you $629 instead, which is quite the jump in price. And these prices aren't even including the type cover, which is an accessory I strongly recommend you buy alongside a Surface Go 2. The good news is if you already own a Surface Go 1 with a type cover, the type cover you've got will work just fine with Surface Go 2. But you really do need a type cover here, because although the Surface Go 2 is a tablet, it's better suited as a mini laptop. The reason for this is Windows. Microsoft doesn't have the best collection of tablet-facing apps. Don't get me wrong, Windows has apps that support touch, but Windows as a whole just isn't as good of an experience for tablets as it is laptops. The on-screen keyboard is fine, but if you're planning to do any long-form writing, the type cover is a must. Some reviewers have complained that the type cover on the original Surface Go was too small. This hasn't changed with Surface Go 2, as the overall size of the product remains the same. I've personally never had a problem typing on the Surface Go or Surface Go 2. Larger people with bigger hands might have a harder time typing on Surface Go 2 for sure. Getting back to that Intel Core M3 processor, this is the second key area Microsoft has focused on improving. Surface Go 1 was criticised for having poor performance, so Microsoft has slipped in a more powerful Intel Core M3 option for the Surface Go 2 to appease those who found the Pentium Gold processor to be too slow. I personally never had an issue with the performance of the first generation Surface Go with its Intel Pentium Gold 4415Y, and Microsoft is keeping the Pentium Gold around with Surface Go 2 using the 4425Y chip instead. This chip provides a very, very small bump in performance over the last generation model, but anything is better than nothing. If you're price conscious and know your workflow, you can get away with using the Pentium Gold model, as long as your workflow consists of running nothing more than a few apps and website tabs at a time. If you're planning to use the Surface Go 2 as a main PC, then I highly recommend getting the Intel Core M3 model instead. The Intel Core M3 model is excellent, performance is good for what the product is, and I'm able to do basically everything I'd want to do on a laptop when out and about, checking email, listening to music, typing emails, and browsing the web and social media. It can even take notes with the pen, which isn't included, unfortunately. 
Now, here's a quick look at some benchmarks for those who are interested in the performance compared to other products. Now, before we wrap things up, I'd like to take a quick second to thank this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. We're all at home using the internet more than ever, so it's important that you protect your privacy when browsing the web. ExpressVPN is a super easy premium VPN service that works across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and more. Use ExpressVPN to access region restricted web pages and video streaming services and keep your browsing history private, all without slowing down your internet. It keeps your IP address hidden and with 24 hour support, over 3000 servers worldwide and no bandwidth limits, you can use ExpressVPN whenever and wherever you need it. You can get 3 months of ExpressVPN for free when you sign up for an annual plan using our link. To get started today, head to expressvpn.com forward slash Windows Central. That's expressvpn.com forward slash Windows Central. Links are in the description. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. The third key area Microsoft has improved upon is battery life. Now, while Microsoft itself touts better battery life, real-world uses suggest the Surface Go 2's battery isn't much better than the Surface Go 1. I've seen about 5 hours of battery before dropping below 15%. My workflow consists of writing in Word, browsing no more than 5 websites at a time in Microsoft Edge, and running Slack in the background, and sometimes even Spotify every now and then. 5 hours for all of that isn't the worst, but it's definitely not the best. I'd recommend carrying a charger with you if you're on a day trip. So those are the three key areas Microsoft has addressed or tried to address with Surface Go 2. Overall, I think the Surface Go 2 is excellent. It's one of my favorite Surface products from Microsoft to date, and it's definitely not for everyone, but I think it's a great choice for students and businesses who need a mini PC for work when out and about. So there you have it. That's our review of the Surface Go 2. Um, make sure you check out windowscentral.com for our in-depth written review by our executive editor, Daniel Rubino. He was lucky enough to review the LTE model, which is basically the same as this model, but with LTE. So make sure you give that a read if that's something you're interested in. That's pretty much everything for this video. So thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.